Greetings, my brothers and sisters. We give all praises to our Heavenly Father, who's always showing out in our lives, always blessing us, always giving us strength on those weekdays. I don't know about you guys, but being a, a mother and a wife, taking care of my family and having two little ones, one five month old, one four years old, it can get so busy some days and I am sometimes just so exhausted. But I tell you, when I get in the presence of God and everybody going to bed, <laughs> glory to God, I get in the presence of God, I get renewed in my spirit. I can feel that tiredness begin to melt. I feel like when I come out, hallelujah, I feel like I can go on a little bit longer, hallelujah. I just feel so refreshed in my spirit when I just get in the presence of God. And so uh, maybe you are a mother and, and a wife and you maybe you're a single parent and you have children. You're like, how in the world am I going to spend time with the Lord? I'm just tired all the time. I got to go to work. I got so many responsibilities you may be saying, I got so much going on. You, you, <laughs> you don't know what's going on. But listen, when I tell you God, hallelujah, will give you the strength to spend time with him. And he will show you a way for you to make time for him. He will. Glory to God. I thank the Lord for just being in my life. I just thank the Lord. I give all praises to our Heavenly Father because I know that without him, I couldn't do anything that I do every day. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't be a mother. I couldn't be a good wife. I just, I couldn't be anything. I need his wisdom. I need his knowledge. I need his, his strength. Cause Lord knows this flesh can rise up sometimes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we have to keep that flesh. We have to crucify our flesh every single day because it's always fighting to take over. Hallelujah. And we got to walk in the spirit. Glory to God. And that is what the Holy Spirit has impressed upon me to talk about tonight. Hallelujah. Walking in the spirit. Why do you hear people talking about that now? Glory to God. Not just now, but in, in general. Why do people talk about that so much? Because we know that if you don't walk in the spirit, you will fall. You will become weak. If you do not feed your spirit, it is so important. I can't say it enough. And y'all, you know, whoever follows me and you listen to um, my teachings or whatever, you will notice I talk about that a lot because I know, Lord knows, I have to walk in the spirit because I know how I used to be. I know what God delivered me from. Glory to God. So I have to feed myself. And even though God delivers you, there's a thing. Now, God will deliver you. If you ever been delivered from demonic spirits and, and, and delivered from, from different things in your life and generational curses, hallelujah, you know you got to stay in the spirit because Satan is never going to stop trying to get you to go back. And so you got to cover yourself. You got to stay. You got to stay in the spirit. You got to stay in his word. You got to eat his word daily. Glory to God. And Jesus said, when he spoke to the Samaritan woman, he said, glory to God, drink from me. You never be thirsty again. You'll never want, want anything else. I will quench your thirst. And so God is telling some of you today, drink from me, draw from me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Samaritan woman mentioned Jacob's well. Glory to God. But Jesus said, Jacob's well can't feel your thirst. How did I buy Kasaya? It can't, it can't, it just can't fill you up. The The world will never be able to fill you up. Having the best job on, on, in the city, it's not going to be able to fill you up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Being the most beautiful, handsome looking man or woman in the world is just not enough. We need something for our spirit. When we've done everything, we have seen everything. At the end of the day, if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. You got nothing. So I just want to read briefly from Galatians chapter five. I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to flow because 
All I know is he told me to talk about walking in the spirit. So I'm going to be obedient. And I'm just going to let him do all the talking. Hallelujah. Because I don't know what to say. That's why I have to walk in the spirit. Because I don't, I lose my train of thought sometimes. Glory to God. So Ephesians, I mean, now I keep saying Ephesians. It's Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 16. And then I'm going to go all the way down to verse 23. I'm reading from the New Living Translation because I like the way that it, it um, breaks it down. Amen. It says, so I advise you to live according to your new life in the, in the Holy Spirit. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The old sinful nature loves to do evil, which is just opposite from what the Holy Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite from what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly what? Fighting each other. And your choices are never free from this conflict. So if you were delivered from homosexuality, if you were delivered from lesbianism, if you were delivered from depression, if you were delivered from uh, anxiety or, or um, gambling, uh, or partying, uh, um, uh, fornication, adultery, these things, the enemy is always going to try to pull you back and tempt you and try to uh, uh, um, get you to go back to your old life because the word of God, again, you, it says, if you live according to your new life, you must walk in the Holy Spirit. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. So as long as we are in this body, this sinful body on this earth, we're going to always have to really cru crucify our flesh. And we're going to have to starve those sinful cravings. You're going to have to, you're going to have to starve your flesh. You're going to have to deprive it. Glory to God. You're going to have to crucify it. Hallelujah. Until you get in the habit where those things don't bother you no more, where you no longer have, you know, those, those cravings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But every now and then the enemy is going to try you. Glory to God. Now, if you think that because you think just because you anointed and you think just because you know the Bible and folks tell you, oh man, you just anointed. Don't think the enemy is going to stop trying to tempt you. He really, really tries to tempt those of us who um, teaches the word of God, who sounds the alarm, who don't mind telling the truth. Glory to God. He really tries to get us to go back. Hallelujah. But we know there's no life in sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. We got to understand, glory to God, there is no life in sin, but there is new life. Hallelujah. When we walk with the Holy Spirit. So let's keep reading. And again, it says these forces are constantly fighting each other. There's always a tug of war. Um, when you get around folks and they try to test you, there's a one side of you, which is the flesh that want to cuss them out. And then there's the other side. That's the godly side. that says, no, love them. Pray for them. Don't curse them. Pray for those that curse you. Bless those that, that talk about you. Glory to God. But your sinful nature said, but they keep doing this. Every time you come around, you try to test you. Won't you just let them have it? Just one time. But that's, <laughs> that spiritual side says, nope, don't do it. You know you're going to go too far. You know that, that in the past, you didn't know how to control your emotions. So we got to be able to listen. You can't listen when you're walking in your flesh. That's why you got to walk in the spirit so you can hear the Holy Spirit talk to you. Glory to God. So let's keep reading. It says, but when verse 18, but when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are no longer subject to the law. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, your lives will produce these evil results. And it gives some examples down here. You will produce fruit of lustful pleasure idolatry, um, oh, you know what, I skipped a couple. So when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, your lives will produce these evil results, sexual immorality, impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasure, idolatry, participation in demonic activities, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, self-ambition, 
divisions, the feeling that everyone is wrong except those in your own little group, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other kinds of sin. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will what will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you cannot live any kind of way and expect to just make it in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You cannot be an idolater. You cannot uh, waddle in sin. You cannot be into all kind of sexual perversions. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to live holy as our father is holy. You can't be jealous of other people, what they have. You got to learn how to be happy for people. Glory to the Basikera Yes, God. You cannot have a selfish attitude. Everything is about you and nobody else matters. You got to be able to love people and care about the emotions of other people. Oh, glory to God. Divisions. We see divisions even in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Over doctrines and, and what's right and what's not. Glory be to God hallelujah then you have those people who think everybody else is wrong except for those little people in your own clique and I, uh, and again god don't like clicks let me just throw that out to y'all god don't like no clicks glory to god so if you got clicks in your church glory to god that is not of god god called us to be unified hallelujah he did not call us to have clicks where we just leave people out and we make them feel like they're not wanted that is not of god it's actually demonic and you're causing people to feel rejected oh glory to god hallelujah you will reap what you sow envy drunkenness drinking to the point where you don't know where you at what you're doing you don't know nothing glory to god hallelujah wild parties and other kinds of sin hallelujah i remember god had to deliver me from listening to uh trans music i used to listen to a lot of house music and and trans stuff like this beat just going on and on until you know it builds up and you just find yourself just lost going like this here and you know just getting you know lost in, in the in the beat you how you know is oh i like this music you don't know what you're doing you open up yourself to demonic spirits and um I, I, and God had to take that desire away from me and he did. Um, I just no longer, I know I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I thought it was nothing wrong with it until the Holy Spirit revealed to me that these things are demonic because it's putting you in a trance. It's not the spirit that's putting you in this state. It's something else. It's the music which we know is not glorifying God. It's not even gospel. It's not even a Christian song. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we have to make a choice. We have to make a choice uh, to live for God. I'm going to say that. You got to make a choice to live for God. You cannot live two lifestyles and think that it's going to be enough. You don't want to die and say, oh, would I help you? I did enough. No, you want to know in your heart that God, I gave you my life. I surrendered everything to you. I got rid of things that I know didn't please you. I got rid of people. I got out of situations that I know was demonic. And I know that I know that I know God that I tried my best to do and live holy glory to god not just enough but i gave you my heart totally glory to god so when god delivered me from listening to that trans and that house music y'all listen i got rid of my playlist i had a playlist on spotify and i used to ride with that dum 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 <laughs> the music just starts to build and you just find yourself getting lost and i said you know what i don't know i don't think this is I, you know, I found out, you know, that a lot of that is uh, uh, deals with the uh, cult. You know, the cult uses music a lot when they're doing the rituals and stuff. And, you know, uh, meditation, all these things, new age religion and all this kind of stuff. You know, you have to be aware. You got to be, listen, I know it's hard. There's some things we think is harmless, but we don't know the enemy is deceiving us. Glory to God. And we, and we just, it's, oh, it's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's just music. Yes, but am I glorifying God? Am I getting lost in his presence? 
whose presence am I getting lost in? Because I'm not getting lost in God's presence. So whose presence am I getting lost in? Why is my mind floating? It ain't floating in the heavenly realm. That by Kasaya. Hallelujah. It ain't floating with Jesus. So where is my mind going? You know, you, you have to think about these things. I got rid of that stuff so fast. I Listen, I got rid of it. And ain't turned, ain't went back since. Nor do I have a desire. Hallelujah. Because now that I'm walking fully, I'm what God is exposing and showing. The more you walk with God, the more closer you become with him. He starts to show you things that most people don't, don't want to admit. They don't want to call it out. Or, or some people are just not there yet. They're not spiritually awakened yet. And you got to be, you got to, you have to listen. Glory to God. You got to listen to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you're going to find yourself standing alone. But that's okay. Because God is pleased with you. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Is that the Lord is pleased with you. Verse 22. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives. He will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here there is no conflict with the law. Hallelujah. But those who would belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and the desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. And if we are living now by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or or um or irritate one another or be jealous of one another. Glory to God. Again, those who belong to Christ Jesus have what? They've nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there so when i got rid of that music i put it on the cross i said lord here you can have this because i don't need it because now i know the truth my eyes have been open now if i go back to listening to that i will be held accountable because see now god has shown me the truth my eyes have been open i now know better and the word of god says those who know better but still do what they do will be whooped with many stripes Glory to God. Hallelujah. So again, we must walk in the spirit because when I walk in the spirit, I'm a loving person. I'm joyful. Glory to God. I have peace. I'm patient. And when people are around me, they feel comfortable. People should feel peace when they're with you. They should feel loved when they're with you. They're supposed to feel like they can just tell you anything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When the spirit of God is in you, you will draw people because his light and the anointing on your life is in you. It draws other people to you, good and the bad. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because they're drawn to goodness. People are drawn to goodness, whether they want to admit it or not. I remember I used to work with a, a witch and she let us know when we first uh, started working and going through the, the hiring process and training, she told us she was, she, oh, she bragged about being a witch, how she did rituals and how she put spells on her ex-husband, how he, he, uh, she put a spell on him and he fell down the stairs and broke his legs. And oh my goodness. I mean, she bragged how her children said, mommy, you're powerful. And at the time they were divorced because it was abusive to her and she hadn't let those, um, those feelings go and that, um, that anger go. And so she would use witchcraft on him all the time. And she talked about how her children went to go visit their dad and how their dad fell down the stairs some kind of way and ended up getting injured. So she was very, she was very, you know, proud about being a witch. Um, but I remember how she would be drawn to goodness. And it kind of made me scratch my head because when we would come in in the morning for training, she would be sitting at the computer listening to hard metal. I'm talking about that stuff where, ah, 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 you know, how they scream, you know, and just sounds just demonic. Uh, talking about de demons and 
all kind of demonic things. She would be sitting at the computer just all calm, listening to ah, 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 ah. I'm like, what? <laughs> Ooh, but yes, you talking about I had to pray every morning. I had to pray every morning. Glory to God. Um, but I, I remember she was drawn to, to people who had like a, um, a goodness about them. So it, it don't, it is, it's, it is imperative. It's, it's, it's like, it's so, um, easy to, to see that goodness always overcomes evil. Light always triumphs over darkness. Even the most darkest person is drawn to the light. Whether they want to admit it or not, you go, you drawn to it. It's just something inside of you. That spirit, those demons don't want you to be drawn. And so I would laugh to myself because she would be so drawn to people who were nice, who were kind. But at the same time, she practiced witchcraft. So it kind of, you know, and I have lots of story about that experience that I don't have time to, to share on here. It would make you say, oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, getting back to the text. We must walk in the spirit. When people are around you, they should feel kindness. They should feel goodness from you, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, self-control can be with everything, any and everything. Too much of something is always, you know, like eating too much, going out, getting uh, fast food. You know, now I must say, <laughs> We, as a family, we noticed we were going out way too much, you know, going out getting hamburgers and chicken and everything else. And we had to sit down because our app, our, our mobile app, our bank app was telling us that we were spending way too much on fast food. So I said, Lord, now I I, I know you're one of your, your fruits is self-control, but I have not been having self-control in that area because, you know, when you're tired, you want to just go out and get something real quick instead of just, you know, taking the time to prepare and, and do a meal that's going to last for the week and all that. And so, you know, of course, I just got lazy and tired and I had to ask God to give me self-control and my husband as well, um, that God would help us to not do that and instead just prepare. You know that you're going to, you know, the enemy is busy. He wants you to spend money on things that's not going to help your family and you know, you have to be aware of those things. Um, and it says here, there is no conflict with the law. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, so again, we, we have to walk in the spirit. In this season, the enemy is really fighting a lot of people hard. I mean, hard. And right now you may be watching me. You may feel weak. And I just want to speak to you, uh, woman and man, and tell you, Get back in touch with, with, with God's word. Read it. You got to read it. Glory to God, because it that's what gives us strength. I know you feel drained. I know you feel like somebody didn't beat you up all up inside a room somewhere. But you got to get back to Jesus, because that's where your strength comes from. Glory to God. I know it can be hard. And you might have made some mistakes. You might have failed and backslidden or went back to your old ways. But now you have a chance. You've been warned. God is speaking to your heart. Even right now, some of you, God is moving on your heart. Just repent and say, God, I'm sorry. <clears throat> God, I'm sorry. God is always trying to call us back to him. Glory to God. He's a merciful God. Hallelujah. He is a compassionate God. And he's always waiting for you to come back. Glory to God. So give your life to him again. Start over today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Do it now. Glory to God, because tomorrow is not promised. When God is speaking to you, you need to do it right now. Glory to God. Don't ever wait. The enemy wants you to wait. Glory to God, because you don't, you don't know what is planned for you, what kind of traps he has set. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. I felt that in my spirit. God says, do it right now. Repent and start over. Start your life over. To God, yes, I did this. I went out and I slept with that guy the other night. I did it because I was weak. But I'm asking for forgiveness, Lord. I know I need help in that area. I have issues with being alone. I don't know how to be by myself. And I just feel like I got to always have a man or a woman with me. I need help, Lord. I'm having lustful and perverse thoughts that I know are not of you. God, can you deliver me 
and touch my mind and set me free in Jesus name. Lord, I've been watching pornography again. Lord God, help me to turn away. I repent in Jesus name and I need you to give me the self-control to turn away from watching those things, Lord God. Show me another way. Show me what to do, oh God, that I may not fall into those temptations again. The word of God says that God will always provide a way of escape. But see, he'll provide the escape, but it's up to you to go down and open up that way of escape, that door. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And sometimes we just don't. But God is going to give you strength. He's going to give you self-control. Oh, Rabbi Kasaya. He's going to give you self-control in your mind. You will be delivered in Jesus' name. You will get a restful sleep. Some of you are dealing with uh, demonic um, demonic um, attacks even in your sleep. Oh, hallelujah. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Oh, I speak to every demonic spirit that is trying to take your joy, your peace, trying to drain you. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Be delivered right now. Hallelujah. Be delivered and set free. In the name of Jesus. Be free. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that the God Abahaya Rebokoshe. I pray God give you heavenly dreams. Oh God, visions. Oh God, prophetic dreams. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be free. Be free. All you have to do is be open with him. Glory to God. He's always listening. He just wants you to be open. He wants you to trust in him and lean on him and pull from him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is the bread of life. He wants to be that in your life. He wants to be the moving force in your life. Thank you, Jesus. He don't want to be your last resort when you didn't try everything else. He want to be your first choice. Hallelujah. So I'm going to get on off of here. Uh, hallelujah. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to get on off of here. Hallelujah. Unless the spirit wants to say something else. But there is there is a lot of um, people in the body of Christ who are weak spiritually. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. We are just falling prey to the attacks of the enemy. And God says, what is going to be your response? Are we going to continue to be beat up by the, by the devil? Are we going to fight back? Are we going to give him the word, throw the word at him, right? Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter six, I believe talks about the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Glory to God. We've got to fight the enemy. We can't sit back and let him beat us up and make us weak and drain. You got a power inside of you. Hallelujah. The same God that rose on the third day has is inside of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rise up. Hallelujah. Rise up. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I'm going to leave you with this and I'm going to get on off of here. I'm going to share my own testimony because uh, we all are going through things. And I, I don't want to just preach to you. I'm also preaching to myself. So when God gives me these messages to share, I'm also ministering to myself and I'm also ministering to you. So I'm going, I've, I'm going, I have went through or coming out of something um, starting at the beginning of this year. I've had, now that the Lord is taking me to another level in him, um, you know, there's always going to be new devils. And anytime you continue to uh, pursue God even harder, the enemy is going to fight you harder because he wants you to be quiet. He don't want you to go forth in your gift, in your calling. So this beginning of the year, I've had family to uh, just, just make up weird excuses to just have an attitude or a uh, 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 about me or just find an excuse just so they, they can be mad at me. Glory to God, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, I've had people last in the previous months, uh, that I've known forever, you know, to just act crazy, no explanation. It don't even make sense. 
And I mean, I've even found myself asking myself, okay, is there anything you did? Did you say something wrong? And I know I, because if I did, I would apologize, but I'm giving you an example of how the enemy will fight you, try to isolate you or make you feel like something's wrong with you. When you know you're doing what God has called you to do, you can expect people in your life to act crazy. He, if he cannot get you one way, he's going to try to get you another way. And a lot of times he will use those who are close to you, people that you confide in, people that you've known for years, um, to just act crazy. And you know that is demonic. These are the things that I've been dealing with is not having that support anymore. And having to really, really talk to God. I don't have the people that I had last year because they've all just act crazy now. And somebody, they're going to resonate with this. And I, I mean, I, I've cried, I've forgave, and I just keep seeking the word of God and I pray for them. I sincerely want God to bless them, not only bless them, but touch their hearts because we cannot die with a heart that's full of bitterness and unforgiveness because God said he won't forgive us if we don't forgive. And I really want them to be saved. I really want them to be, to surrender. Some of these people claim to be saved, but they have totally did a 360. Now, at first I was looking at the person, but God had to remind me it's not them it's the spirit that is using them. And we got to remember we're in a spiritual warfare. You're not fighting flesh. You're fighting principalities. You're fighting demons, unclean spirits who are in place to mess with you, torment you, and try to break up relationships. Oh, come on, somebody. They're there to try to isolate you, make you feel like something wrong with you. You know, if you did this and that, that wouldn't have happened. When in, in actuality, you haven't done anything. It's just that you are getting closer to God. You're making a impact and the enemy is mad. And so he's going to, he's going to use anybody that's close to you. He can use a spouse. He can use a sister, a brother, even your own mama and daddy. Hallelujah. But even when those times come, stay with God because at the end of the day, God is your father and he is the only one that can bring you out. He's the only one that's going to help you to forgive. He's the only one that can heal you when you are trying to understand why people treat you the way you, they do. He's the one who heals you and reminds you that I went, Jesus went through the same thing he was hurt by his own disciples hallelujah thank you holy spirit he was hurt by his own disciples and so therefore he understands glory to god hallelujah i remember one night i think it was the other night i was spending it was the other night last night i was spending time with god and as i prayed and poured my heart out to him i say this and get on off here i've been on here too long um as I was on my knees and I was praying, I was just in the spirit. I was just in the spirit. And as I prayed and wept, God showed me a vision of his feet. And I could see the nails prints in his in his feet. And I don't know, I didn't understand at the time what, what that meant. But it was almost as if I was kneeling down at his feet. Oh, hallelujah. And as I saw his feet and those nails in his feet, I just began to weep. And all of that, just everything that was on my heart began to just, just pour out, just began to pour out. Glory to God. And that image has stayed with me ever since then. It stayed in my mind. It just stayed in my mind. And as I remember those prints in his feet, I remember what Jesus did for me. He died for me because he knew that I was going to be going through this, these things. He knew that I was going to have to go through in the future. And so knowing and remembering that sacrifice that Jesus is there with me, even in the times when I misunderstood, 
in the times when nobody seems to care. Jesus is there. And he's never going to leave me. That brings me comfort, you guys. And I just pray that that would bring you comfort. That you are not alone. And you don't have to carry those burdens by yourself. Because you have a Savior who is still alive. Every other guy has died. But Jesus is the only one who was who rose back up from the dead and is still alive and sitting at the right hand of God. So I'll leave you with that. Blessings to you. I pray the peace of God will overtake you. I pray that you will sleep well tonight. I pray that everything in your home will be, be, will be in order. I pray your marriage will be blessed. I pray your children will be blessed. I pray that you will be healed in your body from every disease, every infirmity. I pray that you will be free in your spirit, no longer battling with sin, that God will give you strength, hallelujah, to overcome those desires that haunt you and torment you in the name of Jesus. Be made whole and may the blood of Jesus cover you and may the angels of heaven surround you, hallelujah, everywhere you go. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen and praise God.